Now, before I bring him on, let me just tell you a brief little story. I'm sure like the rest of you, uh, you heard from the mainstream media what went on in Waco. Um, based on their, uh, of course, their law enforcement fueled uh, propagandization of the events that took place in Waco during uh, what they were calling and describing as a uh, a biker gang shootout. Okay. Uh, now Stephen Stubbs actually was producing. He's a he's an attorney for the bikers, and he has a lot to say uh, about the so-called biker shootout in Waco, Texas, and the treatment of those being detained by the Waco Police Department. Uh, Mr. Stephen, uh, we'll call him Bowtie Stubbs, as he's called. And you'll see why when you take a look at his videos that we'll have uh, uh, linked uh, into today's episode. Uh, you'll be able to see his perspective in his uh, YouTube videos. I strongly encourage you to get those because you'll, you'll feel wide awake to what's really going on in Waco. Uh, he has inside information from the bikers who are still incarcerated and cannot gain release until they sign a waiver for the right to sue. Uh, big revelations are now coming from Mr. Stubbs exclusively here on the Pete Santilli show. And I, I wanted to invite him on. I had a conversation with him earlier. Uh, Attorney Stubbs, Stephen Bowtie Stubbs, welcome to the Pete Santilli show, sir. How the heck are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you so much for everything that you did uh, with your YouTube presentations to give us uh, uh, the right perspective, the truth about what is going on. First and foremost, do, do us a favor. Talk to our <laughs> listening audience, of course, and tell them uh, that they've just been duped, that uh, that this biker rally was not, a, in fact, a gang rally. Um, there is a, an organization that has been meeting for the past 30 years, and they were meeting at the regional level to discuss the results of the national meetings, correct? That was the whole purpose of the biker rally, wasn't it? Well, the, the whole purpose of the meeting, it's uh, the Texas Confederation of Clubs. Um, it is a political organization, uh, the same as, as any other political organization, um, Democrats, Republicans, whatever. Uh, that's been around for 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, and it's an arm of the National Coalition of Motorcycles. Now, the, the city well, also recognizes, and, and by the way, can you hear me okay? I, I can hear you. I had to change positions of my phone real quick oh that's that's okay um and and the city in fact even recognized and knew that this political organization was meeting and the the city council actually thanked the organization uh days after uh this incident didn't they thank them for their service to the yeah, community well, two, and the bikers exactly two uh, two days after the incident um it had already been planned the waco city council uh presented three awards to members of the, the Texas Confederation of Clubs. And, uh, and the, they've known, the city has known, the police know, uh, everybody knows that this is a political organization and it was a political regional meeting. Uh, any any thought uh, or, or expression by police otherwise is, is just silly. Now these bikers, as you describe them, are, are constitutional, they're patriots. Um, they're, of course, advocates for, you know, for biker safety and biker rights, of course. And that's why they do get together. Um, now, these patriots coming together in Waco, Texas, uh, are aware of their constitutional rights. And when this incident took place, a lot of them were read their Miranda rights, were they not? They were rounding up. There were large numbers of them that were rounded up and they were offered the opportunity uh, to not speak out uh, without the presence of their attorney and exercise their Fifth Amendment right, weren't they? Well, they certainly have a Fifth Amendment right. I don't know for sure whether they were Mirandized. They should have been, because mm -hmm. you're supposed to be Mirandized any time that you're uh, not free to leave, which they certainly weren't free to leave, and uh, and you're being asked questions. So they uh, proper protocol and proper uh, constitutional law says they should have been Mirandized there. So I have to assume that that was done. Um, regardless of Miranda, they have their Fifth Amendment right and their right to remain silent, and uh, and they did, in fact, remain silent. Okay, and for um, a lot of those that did remain silent, um, what what happened? What was the outcome of those those individuals that were approached by the police during the investigation? Were some of them detained and arrested? Well, if they exercised their right to remain silent, they were arrested. They were. Um, the <laughs> district attorney even had the gall to go out on the uh, on a television interview and uh, and explain that if they weren't acting like victims, 
And since they weren't acting like victims and completely cooperating with law enforcement in every way, shape, and form, they weren't going to be treated like victims, which I think is preposterous. I'm embarrassed that he's a lawyer and part of my profession. Wow. Okay, so they openly admitted uh, that uh, should anybody uh, choose to remain silent, that they were therefore a suspect and they were they were held against their will and obviously thrown in jail. Now, h- how many of them were arrested? And, down and that's that's uh, that's that's real important, okay? Because the constitutional law that that the Supreme Court has set out says that in order to be both detained and arrested, there has to be specific and articulable facts with each individual. Not as a group, each individual specific articulable facts, and uh, and that that was not done here. They did not have specific articulable facts for um, for the majority of these people. They had access to the videotape immediately, um, and uh, and a lot of these people, I believe, were wrongfully detained and wrongfully arrested. Have you seen copies of the videotapes that uh, that the police have had access to? Uh, I have not. Uh, for some reason, the police aren't uh, releasing them, which is really funny because any other time that there's some kind of a biker event and the, if the bikers are in the wrong, uh, the police seem to to release the video immediately. So um, I don't quite understand this, this, you know, them not releasing it. I have to believe, and from talking with the witnesses, I have to believe that that, that video is going to make them look horrible, mm. absolutely horrible. So they conducted mass arrests in violation of the majority of the uh, bikers' constitutional rights, of course, and they were offered the opportunity to be released, correct? What was uh, that negotiation about? They said you can be released, but what what, uh, were the terms? Uh, Well, it was different for every person. Um, On Saturday, there was a press release by an attorney, Looney. He claims his his client told him that uh, that. Uh, they were being offered a release if and only if they, they signed a waiver. Now, what's interesting about that is uh, since there, there's been a public backlash, everybody's uh, claiming that never happened, um, which, which I, I find to be disingenuous. I can't imagine an attorney offering uh, you know, their client something uh, with, without the DA's approval. Um, uh, the DA now says that it's a, a miscommunication. I wasn't there. I don't know exactly what happened, but I know that a lot of inmates believed uh, that they could be released if they signed a waiver of lawsuit. So how many of them uh, to date are uh, still being detained? Uh, Let's see, there are about 150 of them are still being detained. Still incarcerated. Wow. Okay. Being held without charges? Have they been charged? Yes, they've been charged with engaging in organized criminal activity. Organized criminal activity, and, and you it just a blanket. It's a blanket charge. It's the same exact piece of paper for every single person with the name changed. You tell me, does that sound like specific and articulable facts to you? No, it, certainly it, not. It, it's silly. It's ridiculous. And uh, as you described, the purpose of their meeting was uh, for a political gathering. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I, I, I never believed that a political gathering would be considered uh, organized criminal activity. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. Now, yeah. I will say that uh, there were two motorcycle clubs that showed up that are not members of the COC, um, mm-hmm. and they uh, they were not invited. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and they seem to be the ones that cause the trouble, the Cossacks and the scimitars, uh, they're the ones that showed up and, 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 you know, I believe caused all the trouble. Yeah. But even, um, but even everybody still else was you know, there for a political meeting. I've been to protest as well. I've been president in Baltimore where 99% of the people that were protesting wanted to, you know, cause a traffic jam. They were ultimately peaceful. Um, and, and then you get these, you know, uh, one or two individuals that, um, are predisposed to, you know, to commit uh, vandalism or, 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 or break the law. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you round yeah, up everybody <laughs> and mass arrest them, let, correct? Let, let's be fair, though. Mm-hmm. Like, well, let's be fair. This wasn't one or two. This was somewhere between 50 and 100. Mm. Of the 200 people there, half of the people were not invited and showed up and I believe, believe caused the problem. Okay. So um, it, some, some estimates are at 50, some are at 100. I want to be fair here. I don't want you just just want to you know just throw things out there. Yeah. Um, so so some people were not part of this meeting, were not invited, really had no reason to be there, 
Um, but it's a public restaurant, and so they they let them stay. They you know they didn't they didn't say anything to them. Yeah, but just because I'm in an area where criminal activity is taking place, if I'm not committing crimes, uh, does that mean that I'm guilty exactly. uh, by being present? Certainly not. I I agree with you. Mere yeah. presence is is never guilt. There right. can't be guilt by association. Yeah. So um, I mean, and, and, and I'd and, like and to. We know that some crimes were done. I mean, there were some people that committed crimes. We know that. Right. right? It's it's just a matter of not having the innocent pay for those crimes. Okay. All right. The, but overall, your uh, the overall the purpose of the meeting was it was a political meeting. It wasn't a biker gang rally. One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So that absolutely one hundred percent. Texas Confederation Clubs. Just Google it. Google Texas Confederation of Clubs and see the good that they do and that they've been doing for the last thirty years. Click on their calendar. See mm-hmm. what they do. It's uh, you know, they've it's well established and it's been established for decades. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. And I appreciate you standing up for uh, the rights of those individuals that haven't committed committed any crimes. And in fact, uh, people that you know lost their lives. If you can tell us. Uh, from the discussions that you've had with some people that were witnesses to what took place there. Tell us these stories about what people heard as far as gunshots and what they observed. Okay. Um, I've knew, I've interviewed numerous witnesses uh, and, uh, and you know, they come to me because they trust me and they don't trust the police. I've been, I've been in the biker world for quite some time um, and, and, you know, been helping them. So uh, none of their accounts have been contradictory. Absolutely none. They've all said, uh, said basically the same thing, just from different perspectives. Uh, the fact is, is that at 1130, people were setting up for the meeting. There's a small group of people. And uh, between 50 and 100, some people estimated as 50, others said 70, other, other people said 100. Um, Cossacks and scimitars arrived at the Twin Peaks restaurant. Mm-hmm. Now, um, they, there was hardly anybody there at that time. And so, um, so they arrived... Um, some of them went in to, to go eat and have some drinks, um, some beverages and, uh, and, um, and then they were there and they were there until about 12, 15 when about nine, uh, banditos showed up. Mm. Uh, they parked away from the Cossacks. They walked in, they ordered food, they ordered beverages. They were all sitting inside the restaurant eating because the, the meeting didn't start till one o'clock. Mm-hmm. And so they're eating fine. They're leaving each other alone. Mm-hmm. Um, at about 1220, um, the uh, second group of, of the banditos showed up, uh, around seven of them. They showed up. Uh, they came into the parking lot, and they were parking their motorcycles when a member of the scimitars jumped in front of them and told them that they weren't allowed to pi- park their motorcycles next to the Cossacks' motorcycles. Now, stay, push the pause button. Stay I just think it's Steven? silly. Stephen, uh, stay right there. Yeah. We're going to push the pause button, take a break. As soon as we come back from the break, we'll pick up right where you left off. Okay, so it was, okay. in fact, as we heard, it was over a parking space that this conflict uh, broke out. We'll hear from uh, uh, Stephen Stubbs' uh, account of what witnesses told him. He actually has come forward with their permission to share the story of the truth as to what took place uh, in Waco uh, just a couple of weeks ago. We'll be right back. Many, many people have experienced the benefits of drinking all-natural life change tea. The unique blend of eight herbs helps detoxify your body so you can live a healthier life. Numerous testimonies have been given about the benefits of drinking life change tea. So are you drinking life change tea? Interested? Log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Many are so impressed with our product, they order a year's supply. And why not? When they do, they receive two months free. That's a $70 savings. The body is meant to heal itself. Sometimes the body just needs a little help. Get the tea at getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Or call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. This is not an ordinary green tea and is not available in stores. This tea helps with digestive problems, acid reflux, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and his talk show host, Jerry Doyle says it'll make you as regular as a baby bird. Enjoy your life. Get life change tea at getthetea.com. Hi, this is Danny with the Pete Santilli Show. And for almost a thousand episodes, I've been responsible for making sure that Pete does everything he can to piss off the Homeland Security, the FBI, and the CIA. In the coming days, we're going to be kicking it up a notch. And there's no doubt that every three letter agency will be having nervous breakdowns 
trying to figure out how to silence us. Our message is simple. It's time to get every single American who cares about what's happening in this country in the streets to shut the system down. We're not willing to sit around and wait for the feds to come get us. We're going to take it to them. But we need your help. Obviously, corporate America won't be cutting us a check so we can shut down their businesses. But we need the support of our listeners. Please go to the PeteSantilliShow.com forward slash donate and help support our field reporting. You may not be able to join us in the streets, but this is the best way you can help. Go to the PeteSantilliShow.com and give now because giving feels free. Hello, this is T.D. Joe, the maker of T.D. Joe's Hot Sauces and the Maui Pepper Company. The saga of Tahiti Joe's hot sauces is a very tasty story. Tahiti Joe went exploring the South Seas for the spices and was easily sidetracked, but don't tell his lady. Then, after a few months, Tahiti Joe blended a beautiful array of spices with clam juice and honey. It had a sweet tropical flavor, and with the heat of the peppers, it reminded him of the islands. Tahiti Joe had to name the new sauce, and Tahiti Joe's hot sauces was born. Try it as a chicken wing sauce. Barbecue, marinade, or use it to create a delicious Polynesian Mary. So visit www.tahitijoeshotsauces.com today to satisfy your cravings for tropical taste sensation. Okay, we're back with Stephen Bowtie Stubbs. He's an attorney for the bikers, and he's spoken to witnesses in Waco, and he was telling us the story that uh, we heard a rumor that, in fact, the incident started over a dispute with a parking space. And please carry on. Pick up right where you left off. All right. So uh, so anyway, uh, the banditos didn't, didn't like being told what to do, and uh, I, I'm sure they had some words with... Uh, with the scimitar that told them that they weren't allowed to park uh, next to the Cossack motorcycles, which, which I just think is, is just silly. So, um, so they started an argument. Now uh, the scimitar jumped right in front of them and they were arguing um, and it got a little more heated. And when it got a little more heated, um, 50 plus, we know there are at least 50 uh, Cossacks and scimitars surrounded uh, the banditos. And at that time, at the time they were surrounding, um, witnesses say that uh, three of them actually brandished firearms. They pulled out guns out of their holsters and were just simply Eight holding those guns. To, to our viewers and, and so, uh, that, the banditos look, at this time, this they're is still the on their motorcycles. Um, they've taken off their helmets, and they're uh, being pulled off their motorcycles and being attacked by this group of Cossacks and scimitars. Mm. And uh, they're defending themselves with their fists and their helmets. Um, when one of the Cossacks, uh, either one that already had the gun out or, or one that pulled out the gun, uh, pulled out a new gun, um, shot, uh, almost point blank range, one of the banditos in the shoulder. Hmm. Um, now from there, um, very soon after that, we know that there was at least one more handgun shot by one of the groups of the Cossack scimitars. Um, we're not sure where he was aiming or, or what that was for, um, one witness said that he heard three shots. Most everybody else said one or two. Um, and uh, as soon as that happened, uh, the police open fired uh, completely. They, they had AR-15 type rifles, two, two, three rounds, and they had silencers on the end of their, um, of their rifles. And um, it's been described as just rain. That he, hmm. It was just raining uh, shots. And I understand 14 officers uh, from the police statement, 14 officers were in fact shooting. Um, and uh, 27 total people were shot. Uh, nine total people uh, died. But what's crazy is, is the restaurant is the backdrop to all of this. Mm. And, uh, and it was obvious that they were just, they were just shooting everybody. And, and the police were uh, pre-positioned. They were there on, on the, 
on the scene because they were, some... they were pre-positioned. Okay. There was SWAT there. There was other police officers there. Uh, they, they were pre-positioned. Uh, they were in fact at the location at that moment. Why would SWAT be present for a, uh, bikers political meeting? <laughs> um, that's a very good question. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's actually not that uncommon. Um, they've, they've done it before. Look, a year and a half ago, I got arrested by people dressed in their tactical gear, um, simply because I was at one of these same meetings. I was going to teach it and teach about constitutional rights. And, uh, one of my clients, the Biker for Christ was, uh, being questioned and, uh, and I was told to leave so they could question him without me there. I refused and I was arrested. That was by tactical. Um, that's actually not that uncommon. Um, bikers are, are profiled and, and kind of harassed like this pretty regularly. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. And that was last year that took place? That was uh, November 2013. I was just acquitted, by the way. I didn't even have to put on a defense. The, the judge, after the prosecution put on their case, they uh, said, you're not guilty. You don't even have to put on a defense. And I and was done. Well, congratulations to you. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, how many uh, do, you, do you have clients that you're representing out of Waco, or how did you get so close to uh, to this story? Well, I've been close to the biker community for years. Um, I've represented uh, bandidos in the past in a number of things here in Nevada. Um, I'm extremely close to that club and and a number of other one percenter clubs. Um, and uh, and I've I've been kind of a voice. Uh, for bikers for quite some time. I've also been involved in the COC and the National Coalition of Motorcyclists. I'm a, I'm a regular speaker at their event. So, um, so when all this happened and the police really mowed down all these bikers, um, when, when this happened, the people that knew things, they didn't trust the police. They didn't trust that the police were going to be honest. Uh, they just simply, there's a lack of trust. And so um, they needed some place to tell their story, um, and they chose me. And, and I feel very privileged uh, to, to be on the receiving end of that. Now, what, what have they, uh, to this point, uh, based on their conduct, what have, they been, what have the police been dishonest about? Share that with us. Break it down for us. <laughs> well, a number of things. First of all, the nature of the meeting. Uh, we know it was a political meeting. They knew it was a political meeting. They knew very well. There was, there's no doubt in my mind they knew that it was a political meeting. They also said that uh, that the fight started um, in the uh, in the in the restaurant and moved out to the parking lot. Um, we know that's that's just not true. Okay. Uh, they also said that they uh, ordered the Waco Twin Peaks to not hold the meeting. Hmm. Can you just imagine what that would be like if they came in and ordered them not to hold a political meeting? Uh, that's just silly. Hmm. Um, and uh, Twin Peaks. The, the local the Waco restaurant has come out and and, uh, and made statements to that effect. Look, this did not happen, right? Mm -hmm. They've said that it was a gang turf war. Um, they've they've gone back from that too. Look, there's no turf. This is this is silly. It's not like a street gang in L.A. to where they have lines from the streets and things. Um, this was not a dispute over turf. This this was uh, that those are just silly silly comments. Um, they came out, the police came out and they, they, uh, they essentially blamed everybody but themselves. And what the interesting thing is they had the video. Not only did they have it, they had seen the video. Mm. They went to the businesses immediately after this happened and said, who's got video. And mm. they were looking at the video in the business. And, st right. and still, and so still. they could have seen who was involved with shooting, who the people were within close proximity to the violence that was taking place. They would Absolutely. have seen all that. So they still continued to keep Absolutely. 150 people incarcerated despite that. Just ridiculous. They went into the restaurant. As far as I'm concerned, everybody that was in the restaurant was innocent of anything happening. This took 40 seconds. The entire thing. Um, the entire argument slash fight all the way up to the police shooting took 40 seconds. And anyone who was in the restaurant at that time, as far as I'm concerned, was, was innocent. Mm -hmm. they, they, they did nothing. Um, so so I, I don't see how the police can reasonably say or, or even say that there are any 
specific and articulable fact that those people were, um, were, were involved. Now, some scimitars and Cossacks are in that group, too. Um, there was a, a small group of them that went into the restaurant, ordered food, and were sitting down, and they were having lunch. Um, they weren't a part of, you know, the melee. They weren't part of but any of that stuff. And so, um, so it's very frustrating to me. Number one, we don't have the video, okay? Mm-hmm. Number two, they saw the video, and they kept them there for hours while they tried to sort this thing out. They saw the video and they still arrested um, innocent people and set a million dollar bond for them. They might as well have no bond at all, but a million dollar bond. For all 150 people? Uh, hundred for all hundred and seventy seven people. One hundred and seventy seven people had a million dollar bond on uh, placed on them. You know, let me ask you this: as an attorney, yeah. what happens when uh, law enforcement obstructs justice? Can, can those laws still be applied to them for obstructing justice? It looks like justice is not being served it's because law. To. Yeah, it's supposed to. Well, it, it's supposed to, but it never does. Um, the the Waco Police Department didn't even let anybody help them with their investigation. So they said, look. You know, we were involved in the shooting. We know that. Mm-hmm. We're going to investigate ourselves. Yeah. How do you think that's going to go? Well, just like the mafia I mean, is saying really. that, just like the mafia is saying they're conducting their own internal investigations. Oh, well, it's right. just silly. Right. right. We need an independent, <laughs> an independent people in there. I'm sure the FBI would love to do it. Yeah. Or the ATF or whoever. Have them come in. Have them do an assessment. Uh, have them, you know, really just take care of the situation and take control. Yeah. Um, this prosecutor, as far as I'm concerned, is out of control. Yeah, all the biker, um, all the biker the, gangs. As a matter of fact, sounds like an opportunity. All the biker gangs should con- should conduct their own internal investigations and and tell police to mind their own business. I'm just kidding. I'm being you know, facetious. I, I prefer if you didn't use the word gang. Um, they're oh, clubs. And, oh, the, the clubs. They, okay. They actually, they actually think that. I mean, that's the tag that the, the police put on them. I believe wrongly. Right. Um, and uh, and and that's that's offensive to motorcycle. Clubs. No, so, no, I know that. So, As a matter of fact, uh, I wasn't directing it towards yeah. them. I'm just saying that uh, law enforcement uh, and we're not we're pro constitutional law enforcement, but they act like gangs. And I was using that term insinuating that that's the way that they're operating themselves as as lawless gangs and conducting their own internal investigations is a is a conflict of interest. Listen, uh, Mr. Stubbs, uh, in the remaining moments I have with you here. I want to tell you, we have a late breaking report here. I want to just bring this to your attention. Police have arrested one person during a motorcycle club meeting in Lower Valley in El Paso, Texas. This is just coming off the wire here. Uh, Authorities are responding to an incident. Um, Multiple units are on the scene at the Veterans Foreign Wars Post in Lower Valley. I I don't know if you're familiar with where that is, where at least one person has been arrested, according to police dispatch. A member of the VFW coalition says a meeting that was scheduled for weeks was taking place. A Banditos bike club member tells Fox News uh, that 53 organizations were meeting to talk about fundraisers when law enforcement agencies walked in and said they were looking for somebody. Uh, We're gathering more information on the scene. This is what uh, Fox says, but uh, that's just an update. Stuff's still going on down there where the the, the police basically... Go ahead. If, if they have a warrant, mm-hmm. you know, then they have every right to walk in the meeting and, and serve that warrant on that person. Mm-hmm. If they don't have a warrant, I have a problem with that. Interrupting a constitutional meeting and a fundraising meeting, I, I have a problem with that. Right. So your advice, let me, not that you're going to give legal advice, but ultimately if I'm at, at such a meeting and law enforcement comes in and says that they're, they say that they're searching for somebody, they should have a search warrant. Otherwise I can tell them to take off. Right. Well, uh, an arrest warrant would be sufficient, but mm-hmm. the, the Supreme Court says they don't have to show it to you. So they, they have to have um, a warrant. If they, if they in fact, um, came to the meeting and disrupted the meeting, I would ask them, do you have a warrant? And if they said yes, I would say, please serve your warrant and then leave. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they said no, I'd say, we're going to be here. Can you please wait outside and we're going to finish our meeting? That's there you how go. I would handle it. Yeah, disrupting political very meetings politely, is very... I mean, yeah. Be polite, be right. firm. Right. Polite but firm. Yes, I just, sir. I just have, a, I just have a problem with them barnstorming these political meetings. It's something that we're seeing more and more often in the United States of America. Um, so, anyways, uh, Mr. Stubbs, 
give, uh, if you would, how do we get in, in touch with you? Uh, how do you stay in contact? Give out your, at least your YouTube channel so that people can keep abreast of the updates uh, coming on this, uh, uh, this story. Yeah. My YouTube channel is Stephen P. Stubbs um, and uh, Stephen with a PH. Mm-hmm. My website is stephenpstubbs.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you, you, can, you can contact me through that. Fantastic. Anything else to add that we didn't uh, already cover for the benefit of our listening audience, just to make sure that, um, you know, we keep well aware the me- the media is not presenting uh, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Are they the mainstream media? Are they? Well, if some of them are trying, um, I do need to correct you from the very beginning. Please. Uh, you know, they call me bow tie, but it's not because I wear a bow tie. It's because at a biker meeting, the first one I went to, I showed up in a Prius and, uh, and I had a skull cop on and, and I tied a giant bow in the back. So oh. really, you do something stupid and they'll give you a name forever. And so I, I kind of wear the bow tie just to, just to own it. Oh, there you go. That's so. an interesting, uh, yeah, I stand corrected. Thank you very much. And I, I apologize. And uh, thank you so much for all of your updates, sir. I really do appreciate you keeping the public well informed as you have been. Well, well, thank you for having me. All right. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um. Yeah, this uh, late breaking news, police have arrested one during this motorcycle club meeting in Lower Valley. And, you know, he actually got me to kind of pipe down a little bit Mm -hmm. uh, to be maybe a little bit more polite than I have been towards the freaking police day. (laughs) That's right. I was like, oh, be polite, too. (laughs) I guess guess you don't you don't have to, but you probably, you know, you'll probably have them saying, yeah, well, we're going to SWAT team because you have a broken headlight. No kidding. Right. Yeah. Or you're the or you're the biggest fish, and I only have one fishing pole in the water. Is yeah, one law enforcement. I'm official fishing, and I said. only have one pole. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. that was an interesting. Uh, All right. Now, what's interview. your what's your yeah what what's interesting about it outside of well, what we already knew from the mainstream media, right? And what we already gathered from his YouTube channel. You know what I think? What's interesting is that um, these. It seems like the police did most of the killing. That's what I heard. You know, and they're doing everything that they can to cover that up. From- Including putting silencers on the end of, end of their weapons to, so as not to make as much noise when they start firing bullets. Yeah. I found that to be very interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, you know, I think something that would have ended in a um, maybe just two people being dead ended up with, I think, nine, nine total. Right. Yeah. And a bunch of people hurt and a bunch of people incarcerated, mm-hmm. you know, so and, and I think his uh, his deal here is that how constitutional is it to just arrest everybody? Mm-hmm. And and then um, you can, I guess, for public. No, I don't think you can. And no, I think, you can't. I think You're that's right. the I think that's the whole <laughs> argument here. And I think that they're going to have a good one. Yep. So now, you know, rumors are floating about that uh, they don't want to release these guys unless they sign a waiver saying that, that they, they will not sue. sue. Oh, that normally when somebody says, uh, hey, sign this waiver that you won't sue, I say, well, what are you afraid of? Yeah. Why are you afraid of being sued, right? Yeah. That's what I would do. Yeah. I would start perking up. So you guys yeah. stand your ground. Although, you know, it's under incarceration. Stand your ground anyway. That's right. You should be able to sue their the balls off. Always.